it's very difficult to sell the book to the people who know nothing about it. So the, the first thing what I wanted to do was to people to meet and talk about the topic. And the other thing was that I really thought that if, uh, if I can present the book to the audience, they get a better picture of what I'm writing about and writing about the war, which happened in a foreign country far away, you know, from the United States, you need to have personal touch. So that's why I use somebody who actually read from the book and they ask me to read from the book. I thought that we are much better off to have somebody who is professional who actually can read from the book on a professional basis. So that's why we had an actor, you know, who actually read from the book. And also I thought, you know, playing guitar, having a bit of music in it, it will cut the horror that I'm writing about, about the killings. And then even when he read the book to the audience, it was a very sad story. So I wanted to light up a little bit. So that's why I had a, had a live music, you know, in the part, part, of, the, part of the presentation. And then uh, me talking, you know, to the people face to face and looking into their eyes. I thought I can get a much better, much better pitch for that, much better sort of presentation, why they should buy the book, why they should read the book. Maybe why should they talk to their friends about the book and, uh, and the events that I'm describing. Preface. In 1918, two of the new countries that arose out of the ruins of World War I were Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. Each was dominated by ethnic Slavic peoples who spoke mutually intelligible languages and shared many cultural characteristics. These new countries were, nevertheless, built on centuries-old wounds that reignited when Germany invaded them at the outset of World War II. Both countries managed to survive the upheaval and reprisals following the war. During the 1990s, they began to split apart as political transformation set in. The dissolution of Czechoslovakia was a peaceful affair. Each side, the Czechs and the Slovaks, felt they could do better without the other. This was not the case in Yugoslavia. When it began to fall apart, the outcome was bloodshed and tragedy not seen in Europe in half a century. This book is not an analysis of the causes of the war that subsequently raged there. Uh, rather, it is the story of a Czech investigator who left his job as a homicide detective in Prague to help in the hunt for the criminals of that war. He joined a team of international investigators, lawyers, and prosecutors intent on bringing to justice those responsible for the heinous acts committed in the former Yugoslavia. This story bears witness to the torture and killing of defenseless civilians, to finding and exhuming their mass graves, to investigating and arresting the perpetrators, and finally, to bringing them to trial for the International Tribunal in The Hague. There's another disclaimer I have to make. Now we investigate crimes committed by the Serbs. It doesn't mean that the others didn't commit the crimes. You know, my presentation will be one-sided for one of good reasons, because I'm not talking about my own experience in the book. It doesn't mean that the Croats and the Bosnians didn't commit the crimes. I just wouldn't talk about them because I didn't investigate them. So we'll start for the presentation. Uh, you know, this, this is Croatia. Andre, I would know. The Croat, right? <laughs> now, uh, this is Croatia, but the red areas are the ones which were, which were uh, heavily populated by the Serbs. And in 1991, when the Croats declared independence. And the Croats uh, also brought up a constitution which made Serbs to be minority, which they didn't like. They didn't like to be minority in their own country because they felt it was their own country. War started in Croatia in 1991. There were some skirmishes at the beginning, but the actual first war in Europe after World War II was in Bukovar. It was from August to November. In three months, in three months, they turned this beautiful city 
So this. I tell you why it happened. There was about 1,800 defenders, Croatian defenders of the city, and about 36,000 Serbs and JA officers trying to conquer the city. But they didn't want to fight street by street because they wanted our casualties. So they decided to shell the city with the artillery, with the tanks and the aircrafts. So basically they turned the city into rubble within three months. Now I'll go back with that thing with a presentation. Look, that's Croatia before the war. Three months later, that's it. This was a war of neighbors that lived together for decades after the World War II. And for one of the reasons, one day, they started killing each other. In the middle of Europe, by the end of the century. When I wrote the book, I really wanted to get across the story. And the story of an investigator you know, not necessarily me as an investigator, but the story of an investigator who conducted investigation of the war crimes in the former Yugoslavia. Because I thought that the methodology that we used, you know, and also the personal experience we had with this, if it's not written, it's, for, it's forgotten. So that was the main goal. And then after publishing the book, you know, I have a different mission with this because I didn't know it's going to be successful. And it became successful back home. It's a third reprint now as a best-selling book, but it doesn't have to be necessarily here in the United States because it's two different countries, two different markets. So I really want to have an opportunity to talk to students and talk to people to sort of tell them about what happened because it can happen to us about everybody. You know, people are not immune from the war. You know, everywhere in the world, if you look at that, you know, the conflicts are coming up out of nowhere. It's, uh, Yugoslavia was even worse because it was an invasion. It wasn't like a one country invading another country. This war was a war of neighbors, you know, for one or the other reasons, economical and political. People who lived in one country for decades took guns and started to murder each other. And I think it's a very important message for me to, to spread. You know, people, be careful because the fact that we live in peace is not given, you know. People have to work for it and to avoid, or at least to try to avoid, what happened to the people in Yugoslavia, it needs some work. And if people don't know anything about it, it's more likely that things like that would happen again. <laughs>